Hello, hello, hello. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome to Sacred Interiors Academy. Um, our group, Sacred Interiors, Home Soul Life. I'm here plugging on my phone because I'm going to run out of battery. And last time that happened, it was not very good. So here I am setting this up, letting you guys show up and come into the space. Getting this thing more organized so I can have my hands free because I like moving my hands when I'm talking. All right, so welcome and thank you for, for being here. If you're watching the replay, you know the drill. Let me know you're here. Let me know you're watching. Let me know if any of what I share with you during these videos, during these live videos resonates and if it's helpful. Um, I've had a really interesting week. I'll spare you guys of some of the details, um, but it has been a really profound week in many, many ways. Um, and I've been thinking so much about um, decluttering yet again. I know we've had this kind of conversation and these kind of um, trainings about decluttering a few times because a lot of you are actually here for that reason. I would say that's the one of the main um, issues that most people who come into my group and most people who come into my program are struggling with is clutter. They just feel this heaviness, this burden, this congested sort of feeling in their environment, in their homes, in their rooms, in their offices, and they're feeling really, really drained by that and it creates a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, frustration, overwhelming feelings, and also a lot of grief. And so you guys have maybe already seen my videos on decluttering in general. If you haven't, please go when you finish this live go to my videos here on the group and you'll see all the trainings from before where we talk about clutter from a very um, higher perspective and also a very pragmatic perspective where you actually get a system on how to do it when you're ready to tackle the clutter, which if you're familiar with my program, if you're enrolled in my program or maybe you're a graduate of the program, you know that decluttering is actually one of the last things we do in design as opposed to thinking what most people think is that we start with decluttering but guess what most of us know that that's the part where we all get stuck in and so we start the project a thousand million times and we never get to finish it it's not just you it's a lot a lot a lot of people hundreds and pretty much thousands by now that have been a part of my master class or a part of the group in general are struggling with that and so um, I really wanted to take the time today to talk about clutter specifically about paper clutter and I know that that's also a really big issue for a lot of people. And um, I just wanted to share some insights and some tips about how you can tackle your paper clutter when you're ready um, or when you just can't take it anymore, which is usually how it goes. So again, if you're watching the replay, please let me know that you are, say hello. Um, feel free to ask me any questions. Feel free to send me any pictures. This group is for you guys to engage with me, to get assistance, to get service, to get help for all that you're trying to create with your sacred home. So I wanted to just um, tackle the topic of decluttering your paperwork. So the first thing that comes to my mind when I think of that and when I um, really take in all the case studies of all the people I've worked with is that overwhelm is the first word that comes up with paper clutter. It just is so overwhelming. We don't even know where to start. And so it's the kind of thing that either people are ready to face the overwhelming feelings or it simply gets left undone. And if you probably guess right, most people choose to leave it undone and then decades actually go by and before you know it, you just have so much paperwork to go through that it's like insane. I just heard the story um, just yesterday of someone who, when um, her spouse died, actually had 
found out as she was going through the process of, you know, getting her house in order years after he passed away, um, he actually had the entire attic filled with paperwork. And they actually had to hire a shredding service to get rid of all of it because it was an entire attic completely covered and full with it. So I hear these kinds of stories all of the time. And the attic is actually not as bad because you don't have to see it. But if it's in your room, if it's in your kitchen, if it's in your dining room, in your home office, it's not very comfortable. It's very uncomfortable. It looks horrible most of the times. And also it takes away the possibility of using your space wisely. It takes away the possibility of using your brain more wisely to be more productive so that instead of looking for that little bit of information you need written on a post-it that is drowning in a pile of all the papers, you can have quicker access to it and then save yourself the hassle, the stress, the overwhelm, etc. So I'm gonna guide you through some very simple steps as to how you start with the process. So the first thing I want to remind you, like I said at the beginning, is either it's going to make you feel very overwhelmed or you're not gonna wanna do it. The secret is to stick with the feeling of being overwhelmed. How you do that is through your breath, through your connection to your presence, and through your commitment as to why you want to do it in the first place. And so keep up and you will get there. I promise that if you keep up and you follow the recipe, you will get there. So I'm looking at my screen here that my kids are calling me, but I'm gonna call you guys later. So um, the first step we're going to do is some of you might know um, that there are times where I have shared Marie Kondo's technique as far as decluttering the art of um, the magic of tidying up is her book and I highly recommend it if you're ready for that kind of a process. I do use her process in some of my um, in my program and I do use her process with some of my clients. However, I do have my own um, editing that I've done with her system and my whole group of systems that I've used does include some of the way that she works, which I really admire and I've done myself when I've gone to my clients' homes to do decluttering. It's excellent, it's very efficient. However, it's not for everyone in the exact same way she describes it. Because oftentimes, you know, we have all the information available, but we can't really apply it ourselves. So it's important to just kind of know yourself a little bit, know your patterns, know your habits, know how you feel towards clutter, and then reach out for support if you need it. It's important to know that you don't have to do it alone because I know how overwhelming clutter it can be. So the way I start doing it, and this is specifically talking about paperwork, is we're going to start room by room. So let's say that this is your kitchen area where you want to get rid of paper. So as a side note, obviously if you have a home office, that's a different story because then you really need a whole lot of other um, other papers and more filing systems and all of that. But we're talking about a home um, that you just simply live in, not necessarily a room where you work out of in your home. So the first step is we're gonna gather it all. And that just means you open, oh, you open every drawer, um, every box, every filing system you might have, everything that you have paper in, in your kitchen or in whatever room you're choosing, you're gonna get it all out and create a pile on a table or a counter or the floor, wherever it is that you want to ta tackle the paperwork in. So taking it all out is really important because that alone helps you see how much you have. So that's one. And then we're gonna start through the sorting process. The sorting process is the hardest. Gathering it, it's usually fairly easy. Sorting through it is the difficulty and that's where we get like, oh my God, what is all this? I'll tell you one thing that I do love about Marie Kondo, specifically about paperwork, and she says the best way I deal with it is I just get rid of all of it. And as drastic as that might sound, I 100% agree. However, 
that might not always be the case for everyone and that's totally okay so usually when when we're storing paper um this is really funny a little bit funny um when we're storing paper and we're keeping it it's usually because we're afraid of missing some information that might be important okay so it's really important to realize that we can't always come into um, saving everything out of fear that we're not going to find it later on so if you wrote some information down somewhere you don't throw it away because you're afraid you're going to not have access to it later on like that's really the main reason why um why we keep paperwork so understanding that really if it's important information you need you make a more conscious effort to save it in a designated space maybe you save it digitally maybe you have a specific filing systems which i will share some like key categories in a moment but it's important to just be mindful of your habits during and after you declutter your paperwork like if it's real important information don't just stuff it in the kitchen drawer because you're going to need it okay so that's important to know um, as you keep moving forward so that you can sustain the clean paper-free area within your home so sorting through it is the hardest but is the most important you're going to sort through it in terms of what needs to be kept what needs to be tossed and what needs to be shredded okay so basically obviously what needs to be shredded is anything that has you know your credit card number on it your bank account your social security that kind of a thing definitely shred it for safety purposes um and then as far as keeping and tossing we're not gonna yet categorize everything we're simply going to put away or put on the side a pile of all the things we really must keep okay and what are those things that you really must keep okay the things that you really must keep are things that are genuinely important and at any time that you have a genuinely important document if you can find a way to create or save the information digitally then do so if you can find a way to just scan it and keep it scanned please do it if it's too much if it's too much work or it's just not a part of your habit yet um and it's not something you want to keep on then then keep the document totally fine totally be acceptable but as you're sorting through things you want to be genuine do not just keep everything that you have in the pile of paperwork just because you want to have access to it later on make sure you find ways to have access to these things passwords um usernames or whatever via via email via your your inbox or keep it in your um contact cards on your phone find creative digital ways there's all kinds of information about how to do that but once you have the things that you want to keep then you're going to get rid of all the things you don't want to keep again that's overwhelming but you're going to start going through the pile and sorting through it how do you do that one by one you go one by one by one by one and you do it until the very end or you can use Marie Kondo's approach which is just get rid of it so up to you but that's the way now once you go through that then you're going to find your filing system and this is important because um you want to have quick access to these things so that you're not wasting so much time finding them later on so of course there's your forever kind of things that you need to have like your social security, your birth certificate, those kind of important documents. You create a filing system for that, maybe a folder, maybe a binder. Um and then you have other important documents that you need also like, you know, retirement accounts or investments that you might have. Um any of those things, keep them safe together in that folder. And then the other folders might simply be um or the other pile might simply be things that you need for day to day like you know your water bill your electricity bill which of course you know that there's always the option of just having that be sent to you electronically or even better automatic payments you don't have to worry about it even better however those day to day things that you do need to take care of then you can have quicker access to them in your kitchen counter 
or a small space behind your door that you choose for like day-to-day -day mail, that kind of a thing. I'm sure you guys can be very creative with that. The key is important documents that you don't need all the time don't need to be stored with the documents you need all the time or that you're constantly going through in cycles, looking at them, using them, and then throwing them away. So a lot of the paper clutter is basically different habits that we need to integrate and that we need to apply. So you've put all your important paperwork away. It's up in your closet, it's in your office, in a binder, where there's only one binder for all those important documents. You don't have three, you don't have five, you don't have 10, there's one. One important binder for the important things. And then from there, once you've gone through your pile, you've shredded all the things you don't need, you've thrown away all the things you don't need, it feels great, yet the key, again, is your habits. So the first habit to have in order to sustain that paper-free um, kitchen, counter, room, whatever, is to sort through your mail every day. Just simply, when you go to the mailbox, get your mail and go through it right away. No need to grab it all, dump it on the kitchen counter because it takes one minute less of your time. It's really not that much. Just grab it, rip it off, throw it away if you don't need it. Again, better, better yet, unsubscribe to these um, automatic mailings or these like newsletters or promotional material and don't receive it anymore. In the meantime, simply get rid of it right away and keep that which you need but as soon as you pay the bill, as soon as you do whatever transaction, you throw it away, okay? So getting into the habit of not accumulating, accumulating, accumulating. There's a few things that we do accumulate sometimes, like reading material. You might get a newsletter or a magazine in the mail that you wanna, you wanna really read, but you don't have the time right away. So I like to designate one tray or a basket or a box of some sort, some container that looks good, feels good, um, and I keep it, let's say, on my kitchen. And then this is where I allow my um, for later kind of material to circulate throughout the days. Meaning when I get those reading materials in the mail, I might put it there and I know that as I have five minutes here or there, I'm gonna pick it up and read it and put it back into that same basket. Why? Because that's the basket of things I'm kind of moving through and I'm not sure exactly when I'll get to it, but I know I want to get to it. As soon as I do get to it, um, then I put it away. Either I file it away if it's like a, you know, something nice that I wanna keep. Um, I have like a library where I have my binder Sorry, got a call again. Um, I have my, my library where I keep a binder with reading things that I wanna keep because they're important articles about whatever, parenting, life, mindfulness, anything like that that I really want to keep. But most of the time I read it, if I'm really present with what I'm reading, I trust that I'm gonna embody it and then I get rid of it. Then I either give it back to someone if they gave it to me or then I get rid of it. Um, that is something that I'm very good at, getting rid of stuff that I don't need anymore. Okay, so that's a habit to create, you know, create this kind of like four later tray, keep it there, go through it, but also be genuine and be honest. If you know you've had this article there for weeks and weeks and weeks and you really haven't made the effort to pick it up, then please do either give it away or get rid of it. There's no need to keep it for later and later and later, week after week after week. Really be mindful and intentional with those goals you set yourself to have. If it's something really calling for you to read, you really want to have the information, then please make the time. Um, I know it sounds a little harsh sometimes when I say that, but really, sometimes we go in our head so much about how long things take, but really picking up an article that's a page long normally won't take you more than a few minutes to really read and sit down with it. And what's five minutes less of your time taking care of someone else or doing something else that you have to do? Honor yourself if it's something that really interests you. Okay, so that is having those habits available. It's super important. So storing digital information more and more as you're able, scanning if you need to, 
having that binder for important documents that gets tucked up somewhere that you don't constantly have to see and then having your um, day-to-day kind of basket or container where you have your reading material and then another small area for your active material like bills that you need to pay, etc. that as soon as you're finished with, you get rid of. The other part of this is um, the memories or like the kind of, you know, greeting cards, letters, poems, that kind of a thing. It's usually a little bit more difficult to get rid of. There's usually more like emotional charge with it or whatnot. Here's how I deal with it. First of all, there's many creative ways to deal with this. First of all, I am strict about how many of the greeting cards, letters, cards, poems I get for birthdays or Mother's Day or whatever, how many I keep. I don't keep all of them. And that's the biggest challenge for most people. So I have three cardboard boxes. They're really pretty. They're like round kind of shoe boxes, but round. And they have all kinds of designs. You can get these really beautiful boxes pretty much anywhere. Home Goods, Marshalls, anywhere. I have three of them that I stack in my closet and that I have my prosperity altar in because my closet is my prosperity area. So in those boxes, I place and store all cards and poems or letters that I receive from my loved ones during these special days. The moment they start getting full, then I make sure I take the time to bring them out. Sometimes I do this on a full moon. It's just part of my kind of ritual that I've had for years. And I bring out my box, go outside under the full moon, and I take the time to remember. I take the time to relive the beauty of their words, the gratitude I have for them. I take time to pray for them if they're going through a hard time. I take time to um, cry for them if they've been gone, if they, you know, died or if they're not a part of my life (coughs) anymore. So once I go through that, then I truly decide, you know, do I really need to keep every card that my mom gave me that says happy mother's day dear daughter i don't i really don't i know my mom really loves me i know she really does mean it when she says have a happy mother's day but i don't need to keep every single card so most of the times i'll keep the ones that you know maybe have like deeper words to them or maybe like she really touched a space in my heart that really really like resonated with me or went really much deeper but if it's your traditional happy mother's day have a great day kind of card with like the funny dude in the front or whatever the naked stripper guy i don't know all the crazy things you get do you really need to keep it like no so two things i do with that one is if i love the artwork and it's really beautiful i'm crafty you might not be don't beat yourself up If you are crafty, I love like cutting the front of the card and I have a stack of some of those things, not a lot, a small little box of those cards that I keep and then I can reuse them for another gift. So I might make a scrapbook page for someone on their birthday. I like to use them for making my own cards, reusing images of other cards. This is a personal thing. You might not go through that. Again, I keep it very small. I don't have a giant box of them. I just have a small box. And if I see that it's full, then I don't need it. When I don't need it, or when I'm willing to release it, like if it's, I don't know, an ex-boyfriend that you really have been holding on to his love letters for for a long time, but now you really feel free and open to a new relationship and you hold the memories in your heart, but you're ready to let it go, then... I do fire ceremony, which means I turn on a fireplace if I have one available or all kinds of ways to be creative with that. And I burn these cards and I burn the papers and I burn the poems. And to me, that's kind of a ritual of honoring the relationship, honoring the words, honoring the wishes, but letting them go so that more of them maybe come my way, Um, more of them are shared with the world, but I don't need to physically be attached and hold on to the paper that says this is 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 your wish so 
I hope this is helpful, you guys. Um, really going through that process is also really emotionally freeing. It's also really um, emotionally satisfying. A lot of times I get to feel really proud of myself for being able to move beyond um, holding on to something so tight and really surrendering it and trusting that more and more of these wishes will come. There's a level of abundance that can come in place when we trust that these won't be the last loving words we'll receive from someone or these won't be the last loving words we receive from um, from friends and family. Like There will be more moments to receive more. So let me say thank you. Let me say really, um, let me tune into gratitude for this times and then I, I get rid of it. So that's how I deal with all my sentimental paperwork. I hope that you guys take this into consideration when you're purging through your papers. Let me know how it goes. Let me know if you need any help, if you need any assistance. And other than that, I hope that your drawers look super clean. This is also a really good project to do for the weekend. So even if you're not ready to do your whole design, even if you're not ready to do all that you know you want to do, just doing the paper part is powerful because paper is one of those things that most of us have too much of. So be mindful and not also, um, again, be mindful in the way that you sustain once you clean up and declutter. Be mindful in the way that you invest in paper. Be mindful in the way that you... Um, also gift other people of cards or written word like maybe using digital media is nice to so just send an e-card instead of buying yet yeah, another hallmark card not that i have anything against hallmark sometimes you do want to do that but it doesn't have to be a habit and then even more cool is to be able to repurpose them because why not who needs more paper in the world? We don't. We need to actually be more conscious of not wasting so much of it. So that's just kind of my own personal touch um, there. But I hope you guys enjoy this. I will see you next week. And those of you coming to California this weekend, hopefully the fires will let us have our retreat. Um, if you haven't yet bought your ticket, you might still have room. So find maybe a spot or two that you're able to fit into and join us join us for the retreat with um i don't know how many women we have right now but there's a lot of people now um registered and waiting for it and so um those of you who are coming i'm excited i will see you there um over the weekend thank you satnam